Hey what is up guys, it's Gino here and welcome to our generics tail view tutorial and in this tutorial I want to show you how we can use generics to register and dequeue our table view cells in a much more efficient and modern and easier way than doing it the standard way of declaring reusable identifiers throughout our code so we have to store like 20 or whatever how many identifiers you need in our code and this is very tedious and it's not very efficient so I want to show you that how to do that and if you're watching this tutorial uh, you should probably know about generics so it's not aimed towards beginners so be sure to read about generics etc etc I will link a uh, site in the description below from Apple where you can read all about generics etc so you do that before you watch the video if you don't understand generics and without any further ado let's get right into it hey welcome to our table view generics tutorial and I've set up my um, Xcode right here. If you watch my beginner tutorial, you already know how to do it. So I deleted the main storyboard and already set the root view controller of our window. So next step is going to be to create our table view. And as always, we're doing it through a closure. So we're defining it in our, t in our view controller, like so. And I'm doing it the standard way of doing it by defining a the default reuse identifier string, but I will show you right now. That table you like so. And let's conform to the protocols of delegate and data source. And also let's register this cell right here by creating a new string called identifier equals ID that's okay and here you're gonna pass in the type of your table view cell and of course the identifier and this should not be a let, it should be a lazy var. And it is giving you an error because we're not conforming to the delegate and data source protocol. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to extend the view controller here. And extend it through the delegate protocol and the table view data source. Now we need the functions, number of rows in section, we're going to return 10 just for testing purposes. And we're going to need the cell for row function. And we're going to, here we're going to dequeue our cell, like so, with, identi with our identifier that would be specified at the top. And the index path. I'm going to return the cell and just to see if it's working, I'm going to render a text in our cell. I'm going to call it, I don't know, whatever. And right now it's still not rendering on, on our table view because we still have to use the constraints to uh, put the table view in our actual code. So we can do that by Specifying translate auto resizing mask into constraints equals false. And this is not the suggested way of doing it. I have a video on how on auto layout extensions that are that are much better than doing it this way. So check it out. It's on my channel. I will link a dis a uh, the link in the description so you can watch that if you don't understand or if you wanna have a better way of doing auto layout. So first we're going to have to add it to our subview. And now again we can actually start uh, our constraints activating our constraints. So I'm going to call table view dot top anchor and constrain it to the view dot top anchor like so. And activate it equals true. I'm going to do that for 
every single constraint like so a leading anchor trailing anchor here and lastly the bottom anchor and when we run it we should see 10 cells that are filled with a random text which is whatever okay so it started and now we can see that we have 10 cells in our table view, it is, it, it is all working as expected, but it is not always optimal to declare a, uh, a string variable to store our default identifier. So the better way to do it is to dynamically create a identifier by using our table view cell class name. And we can do that by using generics. And so the first step is to create a new class right here. I'm gonna call it um, UI kit. Oops, it should be a capital K. Okay, I'm gonna import UI kit as well. And the first step is we're gonna create a protocol called reusable view. And here we're gonna create a static variable called default reuse identifier. And it's gonna be uh, it's, it's going to have a get property and so we can actually put in a value for our default reuse identifier by extending the protocol like so and this might be a little bit tricky but worse self UI view so this is called a generic where clause and it is useful because you can further constrain the use of extension. So everything that is going to be declared in this extension is going to be um, only available to UI views that are ex uh, that are conforming to the reusable view protocol. I know it's tricky, but if you follow me along, it's going to be very clear. So we're going to so we're going to declare the same thing as above and we're going to return an ns string from class which is self and this basically says that it is going to return the name of the class of whatever it is in our ui view so in our case it's going to be ui table view cell or if you're going to create a custom cell it's going to be the name of the custom cell and now we just have to conform, uh, let our table view cell conform to the reusable view protocol, like so. I'm gonna leave that blank and empty because we don't, we only need it to be conforming to the reusable view and we're not really doing anything inside it. So now we're gonna call an extension for our OER table view. And here we're going to create two custom register and the queue functions. So if you go back to our view controller, you can see we already have a table view and a register function and a the queue reusable cell function, but these are already provided through the Swift API. And we're going to create a custom one in our UI kit. So we're going to start off with the register function, which is um, receiving a generic type of UI table view cell. And this basically means that you can, um, you can pass in any type of UI, of UI table view cell. So it might be a custom made t UI table view cell or just a standard UI table view cell, doesn't matter. And that's why it's very, uh, that's why generics are so useful since uh, you can really reuse them for every single UI table you sell that you're doing. So we're going to pass in the t dot type like so. And right now, what we have to do is when you call, we're going to call register 
for our cell class, which we're gonna call t dot default reuse identifier. Like so. And our type is going to be our reuse identifier is going to be the t dot default reuse identifier, like so. The next step is going to be to create a custom dq reusable cell class uh, function. dq reusable cell. And it's, a, it's going to be have uh, it's going to have to the same generic parameter as above. I'm going to pass in the index path like so. Okay, I'm sorry the camera turned off unexpectedly, but this is where we left off, and I made a little mistake. Instead of actually passing in t, I want to pass in t.self uh, because we're actually um, grabbing the UI table use cell itself and not the t type. So the next step is going to be to finish our guard let statement. And our cell is going to be equal to the q reusable cell. And here we have the type.default reuse identifier from our type that we passed in right here. And for index path, we're gonna call index path. I'm gonna convert it or typecast it to T, which is our UI table view cell. Else, if it's not possible, then return, I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna show an error, a fail error, could not DQ cell. For whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. And uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna return the cell like so. And now we're finished, and we can actually uh, change our code. So we are using the gen generic instead of the default way of doing it. So we're gonna call tivview.register, but we're gonna call our uh, register function that we created right now. So it's going to pass in a t to type, which is your table view cell dot self. And at the very bottom, we can dequeue our cell the same way by pass by calling our custom made dequeue re reusable cell function. So here we're going to pass in your table view cell dot self as well. Or index path and if we run it now we should see the 10 rows again with our text it should still work the same it should still have the same output as before it's just a much more convenient way of doing it and it is working as you can see we still got our 10 cells and we don't have to bother with doing identifiers and storing 20 different identifiers in our code which I did when I started off with Swift. So this is a very convenient way of doing it. You're just uh, passing in the table view cell itself. It doesn't have to be a table view cell. You could also do the same with collection views. It's still the same principle. You just have to swap or add um, the extensions for the, ex for the collection view. So it still has to conform to the reusable view protocol and just have to register a uh, generic of type collection view cell instead of a UI table view cell. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks so much for watching my tutorial. I hope you've learned something new today. And I hope you now know how to use generics to register and dequeue UI table view cells in a much better way than storing them in a string variable. So if you have any questions or comments, please ask me in the comment section below or Write me an email that I'm linking in the description below. And as always, keep coding and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.